my channel. My name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout, a company that is focused on educating and inspiring you to create a handmade wardrobe that you love. Today, I am bringing you a sew along for one of my own patterns and quite possibly one of the most staple of all staple garments you'll have in your handmade wardrobe, the birdie button up. This is a shirt pattern that comes with two options. Version A is your basic button up shirt with a traditional shirt collar and patch pockets on the front bodice. Version B features a series of tucks across the front bodice and a simple band collar. And both version of this blouse can be sewn as a shirt dress. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to sew version A of this pattern. And I'm also gonna be showing you my most favorite tried and true method for sewing a shirt collar. And I love this method because it gives you a very crisp result and it's a collar that keeps its shape. It keeps its shape turned down so you don't have to constantly reshape it and iron it into place. It's a great method. And it's a method that I adapted from the book Shirt Making by David Page Coffin. And I've put a link to that book below. And this book sort of became my shirt making Bible when I was developing this pattern. And it's just loaded with resources and information on creating beautifully finished shirts. And I highly recommend it. So without further delay, let's make this shirt. For this project, I used about two and a half yards of a very lightweight tissue linen blend that I picked up at Joanne Fabrics. And I also used 10 half inch buttons. I also lengthened the bodice by about two inches on both the front and the back because I just wanted a slightly longer bodice than what the pattern is originally drafted for. These are the front bodice pieces. I have two of these mirrored. They're just stacked on top of each other. And I've marked the dart legs at the side seam with notches and the dart point with a removable fabric marker. And I've cut the back bodice out and this piece was cut on the fold so it is one whole piece. I've also got two sleeve pieces that are cut mirrored to one another. And since I'm sewing version A of this pattern, I've cut two collar stands, two collars, two sleeve cuffs, and two front patch pockets. My first step is to interface and fold the front bodice button plackets. I've omitted the sew on button placket for this tutorial, and I'm just doing a grown on placket for both of the front bodice pieces, since my fabric is the same on both the front and the back. So I'll just fold my placket to the exterior or the right side Side of the fabric to create a faux placket here. And I interface the placket with a one inch strip of interfacing before folding it first by 3 8 inch and then by an inch. And dang it, I got a little spot on my fabric. Now I'll take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch that placket down on both sides. I'm using a very narrow edge stitch here to top stitch both sides of that fold in place and make it look like a sewn on button placket. With both plackets sewn, I can now move on to sewing the bust darts. I can see my little blue dot here that I marked the bust point with, and I'm just aligning the notches at the side seam and creating a fold that ends at that little blue dot there. Starting at the side seam, I'm sewing past the dart point and I'm just going to knot my thread tails at the end there instead of back stitching because it'll be a nicer finish on that dart point. And then I'll just trim those threads and I'll press my darts downward on both bodice pieces. Now I need to prep the back bodice by adding a pleat at the neckline on the back bodice. So I'm pinning here where the notch is on the pattern to indicate where to sew that pleat and I'm going to sew it down about four inches into the back bodice. I've marked that four inch point on the fold there and I'm just going to sew all the way down and back stitch to secure it at that point. I have my pleat folds on the interior of the bodice but you can do this on either the interior or the exterior. It's totally up to personal preference. Now I'm just ironing the folds in the pleat to create a box pleat. This pattern does not have a yoke like a lot of traditional shirts, but it does have this pleat which allows for some extra movement in the shoulders and also is just a really nice little detail on the back of the bodice. Once I have the box pleat ironed in place, I'm going to tack this down at the top and at that point where we stopped here with a secure stitch to hold that in place on the back bodice. So I've basted it at the top and at that four inch point, I'm going to go back and forth a few times just to really secure it in place and keep that pleat from pulling apart. And here's how that looks from the exterior and on the interior. 
Now I can sew the front bodice to the back bodice with a French seam. So to do this, I'm going to put the pieces wrong sides together first. Sew the first seam of the French seam along the side seams and shoulder seams. Then I'll flip that all wrong side out and sew the rest of the French seam. And here is how that looks with the finished French seam sewn into the bodice. I love using French seams because they're just a really beautiful way to finish a garment if you don't have a serger. Oh, hey, and now you can try on your bodice. Yeah, yeah. Now we can attach the sleeves. So we are going to sew a couple of basting stitches along the sleeve cap between the notches for the front and the back of the sleeve. And this is just so that we can gather the top of the sleeve a little bit to make it a little bit easier to set into the arm side of the bodice. And you just wanna gather it enough to kind of curve the top of that sleeve cap over. And then we're going to fold the sleeve in half, wrong sides together, and also sew a French seam in this sleeve as well. So first I'll sew it wrong sides together, then I'll flip it wrong side out and sew it right sides together to complete that seam before attaching it to the bodice. Now turn the bodice inside out, so the wrong side is facing out, and then take your sleeve and turn it right side out. And we're going to insert this into the bodice and align it with the arm side. The notches at the sleeve cap to ensure that you're aligning the single notch with the front of the bodice and the double notches with the back of the bodice. And your sleeves should be right sides together with the bodice while you're doing this. I like to align the bottom of the sleeve with the side seam before aligning the notches of the sleeve and the sleeve cap and then working to evenly distribute that sleeve cap along the top of the arm side of the bodice. And don't be afraid to use a lot of pins for this step and make sure that you get everything evenly distributed. You're gonna notice that you have a little bit of waviness in the sleeve cap here, but that's okay. It'll all kind of even out once you sew it to the bodice. Now that we have everything pinned in place, we can attach the sleeve to the bodice. And I'm not doing a French seam on the sleeve attachment because I always feel like French seams are just really uncomfortable in the sleeve cap and arm side. So I'll be sewing this on the machine first just to make sure that everything is nicely distributed from the cap to the bodice and then I'll take it over to the serger and finish off that raw edge. I'm moving pretty slowly around this arm side and sleeve cap just to make sure that I get everything nicely distributed. Sometimes things can get a little bit bunched up when you're sewing this so I'm just kind of feeling my way through it making sure everything's nice and smooth as I take it under the sewing needle. If you do happen to get a few bunches in your sleeve cap, like I did here, it is okay. Just undo a couple of the stitches and see if you can't kind of wiggle that little wrinkle out of the seam allowance there. And then you can just go back in and re-sew that one area. And if you only have a couple of little wrinkles like this, you should be able to fix it pretty easily and not have to completely take off the sleeve and reset it. Once the sleeve is attached and all the wrinkles are removed, you can take out your basting stitches that you use to gather the sleeve cap. And I'm just gonna clean up that raw edge with a serger. And I recommend trimming down the seam allowance in the arm side to about a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch at the most because it'll be a lot more comfortable that way. You'll do this for both sleeves. Now it is time to prepare and install the collar using my favorite collar method. I've interfaced one of the collar pieces and for the piece that is not interfaced, I've trimmed it about an eighth inch short on both of the short sides. Now I'm going to pin the sides together and it's going to stretch the uninterfaced piece of the collar a little bit and I'm lining up the center. So you basically want that uninterfaced side to be a little bit stretched and I've pinned these right sides together. Now I'll just sew the two collar pieces together along three sides, leaving that bottom edge open. I'm starting at one of the short edges and I'm sewing normally up to the corner there and I'm gonna pivot and sew about an inch. And for the majority of the top part of the collar, I'm going to be stretching that shorter piece to match along the edge of the piece that we did not trim. Once I get about an inch away from the other corner, I'm going to sew normally to the corner, then I'm gonna stop and pivot to sew down the other short side of the collar. Once this is all sewn together, you'll notice that the upper collar is going to have a little bit of slack and the under collar is gonna be pulled nice and taut. So now I'm just trimming the seam allowance here down to about an eighth of an inch and trimming those little corners to remove the bulk. 
and I'll just turn this right side out, being sure to poke out all the corners nice and crisp. You can use a turning tool to poke out those corners. Do not do what I'm doing here. Don't use your scissors. It's just not a good idea. I don't know why I'm doing this. And you can press the collar nice and crisp. I'm just pressing that top seam flat before I turn it all right side out and press it flat. And as you're ironing and turning this, you'll notice again that that upper collar has a little bit more slack. So just keep stretching and kind of keeping things in place as much as you can while you're pressing this. Once you have this pressed nice and flat, you can take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch around the perimeter of those three sewn edges. Again, you'll sew just the way you did when you sewed them together. You'll get about an inch into the corner and then start stretching to make sure that that shorter edge kind of aligns with the longer piece. And then do the same to sew normally down the shorter side of the collar here to finish. And I'm having some trouble getting it through my machine. Now I can start adding a little shaping to this collar. I've got the interface side of the collar on the ironing board and the taut side is facing me and I'm just going to iron in a fold that is about 5 8 inch along the entire raw edge of the collar here. And I'm using my seam gauge to make sure that I get that at 5 8 inch across the entire thing. I'm also kind of pulling the upper collar around to the side of the fold to try to keep those, those raw edges aligned as much as possible. They're not going to be perfect but just do as best you can because you really kind of want to pull this into place and get a nice fold pressed in that collar. We're basically just shaping this so that that taut side is going to pull the upper collar around to the right side when it's folded. Now I'm just going to sew that seam allowance in place as close to that fold as I can on the sewing machine. This is just going to kind of keep that fold in place. And I'm using my tailor's hand here to shape that collar just a little bit more and give it a nice curve around the neck. Now we can set that collar aside and move on to attaching the collar stand to the bodice. I've laid the bodice face up and I've interfaced one of the collar stand pieces. I'm going to lay this right sides together with that bodice neckline and pin that in place. And you should have about 5 8 inch of that collar stand overlapping at the button placket here. I'm sewing the collar stand to the bodice neckline with a 5 8 inch seam allowance along the entire neckline here. And I'm going slowly, checking to make sure that there are no wrinkles in there. I've used a lot of pins to hold this in place, so just take your time with this step. Now I'm just clipping into the seam allowance of that curved neckline just to make it easier to open that up and work with it. Then I'm going to turn this wrong side facing up and attach the other collar stand to this assembly. Wrong side facing up, and I'm only using one pin here because we're going to stretch this in the same way that we stretched our collar. So I'm starting at the center back and sewing out to one side and gently stretching that collar stand so that it extends. Here I've got it about maybe a quarter inch past the end of the collar stand on the other side. And I'm doing the same thing, starting at the center and sewing to the opposite side with a little bit of stretch. Just like on the collar, this is going to encourage that collar stand to stay in place. Next, I made the poor decision to use my rotary cutter to trim this collar stand and I totally sliced into my collar. So yeah. Oh my God. <sighs> now I have to replace one side of my collar stand, which is not the end of the world, but it's just very frustrating and yeah. So here I am removing all of the stitching for that collar stand that I just added and I'll do a new one and reattach it and do it the right way and not use my rotary cutter, dang it. So I attached it in the same way that I just showed you and grabbed my scissors to trim that seam allowance very carefully, making sure that I'm not slicing into it again. And I'm trimming this down to about a quarter inch. Okay, now we're back on track. I'm going to press both of those collar stands up and away from the bodice to prepare the collar stand for the collar attachment. First, I'm just positioning the collar on top of the collar stand to get an idea of where this is going to land at the button plackets. And I wanna make sure that this is even on both sides. And sorry, you have to look at my scalp here. But I've pinned the center and the ends and I'm just making sure that those match up on both sides of the button placket. And if I need to kind of reposition those just a little bit and kind of fudge it just to make sure that they're equal on both sides, you can see there's about a, I don't know, a 32nd of a difference between the pins. So I'm just repositioning that pin 
Then I'm going to clip into those raw edges to mark those locations on these collar stands. And remove the pins so that now I just have notches to show me where to position my collar when I attach it to the collar stand. This next step feels a little bit weird the first time you do it, but basically you wanna roll the button placket into that collar stand and pin the collar stand pieces right sides together, just around that curved edge there. So I've got this all pinned and nicely lined up and that button placket is out of the way of the seam allowance. So I'm gonna sew just around the curved edge to that pin there that marks where we put the notch, if that makes sense. So I'm just sewing to that little notch that indicates where the collar attaches to the collar stand. I'll do this for both sides of the collar stand right where it attaches to the button placket. And before I trim the seam allowance here, I'm just going to pull out the button placket and make sure that it sewed together nicely. And here you can see that it did. We just started the very end of that collar stand where it meets the button placket. So I've turned this back wrong side out and I'm trimming that seam allowance down on both sides to about an eighth of an inch, just on that curved edge and leaving the rest of the seam allowance intact. Now I can turn the button placket right side out and press the end of that collar stand in place. Again, I'm using a tool that should not be used to poke out corners. You can see I almost poked a hole in my fabric. Just get a turning tool. I have one, I don't even know why I don't use it. Just use a turning tool. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just pulling that seam allowance out a little bit. There's a little fold in there. I just wanna clip into the seam allowance to release the edge of that seam allowance, if that makes sense, just so that it's not folded under there because it'll make it easier to attach this to our collar piece. I'll do that on both sides. I've laid the bodice face down so that the interior of the bodice is facing me and I'm going to align that collar with the collar stand on the interior. And you'll notice that the fold of the collar is facing me and I'm just aligning those ends of the collar first with where we stopped the seam for the top of the collar stand. Once I like the position of that, I'm going to continue pinning the collar to the collar stand along the entire length of the collar stand, making sure to evenly distribute the raw edge of the collar stand with the raw edge of the collar. And now I'm just going to sew these pieces together with a 5-8 inch seam allowance, getting pretty much right in the center of that fold along the entire distance. And you may have to kind of stretch this and ease it into place a little bit since we did a little stretching of the under collar and the under collar stand. So just take your time with this step to make sure you get it all nicely attached. And you can start to see how that collar is going to flip into the collar stand. Next, I'm going to just press all of the collar stand and the collar into place and kind of press those seam allowances that I just sewed. And I'm going to fold down the exterior collar stand so that I can start to conceal those raw edges inside the collar stand. I'm also trying to get a consistent 5 8 inch fold along that entire edge that also matches nice and neat with the seam that we just sewed to attach the collar to the collar stand. Now we can top stitch that unstitched edge to secure it in place and finish the collar stand. And I'm pivoting and going around the entire perimeter of the collar stand with my top stitching. And the collar attachment is complete. Now I can do some final ironing and shaping of the collar. It should fold pretty naturally into place since we pressed that fold in the beginning when we were constructing the collar. So you can see here, it's just so nice and crisp. So satisfying. Now it's time to finish the sleeves. And I have to be honest, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit on the sleeves and attached them before I should have, because <laughs> all of this would actually be easier if the sleeve is unattached. So we're just going to cut the placket open about four inches up. There's a little notch on the sleeve pattern that shows you where to cut that. And I'm doing that on both sleeves. For this sleeve, we are actually gonna do what is called a continuous lapped placket. And this is a little different than what is in the original pattern instruction. This is a little bit easier to me to construct. 
So I'm just cutting two strips of fabric that are about an inch and a quarter wide and they're gonna need to be about nine inches long. The placket itself is about four inches tall. So I'm just giving myself a little bit extra room with the binding that I'm creating here. And I'm making these nine inches long. Now I am pinning that binding that I just cut right sides together with the edge of that sleeve placket slit that I just created. And when I reach the center apex of that slit opening, I'm just giving myself a little bit of a gap there between the edge of the binding and that sleeve opening about a quarter inch so that it just tapers to the end. And you can see that a little bit better here. Now I'm sewing this with a quarter inch seam allowance and that seam allowance is gonna get right next to that apex corner there where we kind of backed off the placket. Now I'm going to press the binding away from the sleeve and make sure that all the seam allowance is pressed into the placket and I'm gonna fold that placket twice basically to just create a binding that conceals all of the raw edges of the seam allowance, which you can see here. And I've got that placket opened up wide and I'm just gonna sew that down. I'm gonna top stitch that binding along the entire sleeve placket. I'm doing this with an edge stitch that goes right along the very edge as close as I can get it to the edge of that binding. And with the binding secured in place, you can see how that looks on the placket opening. And that's pretty easy to sew. I'm gonna trim that end there. Now I just wanna fold that placket in half toward the interior of the sleeve. I'm on the interior of the sleeve right now. And I'm going to stitch that fold down at the top there just to kind of keep that tacked toward the inside of the sleeve. Now we can prepare the sleeve cuffs. I have two sleeve cuffs. I've pressed them in half lengthwise and I've interfaced one half on the edge of that fold there. Now I'm gonna press a 5 8 inch fold in the interfaced side of the sleeve cuff toward the wrong side. So back to our sleeve, I've got the garment turned right side out and with the garment face down, so the front of the garment is face down, I'm just going to tack that top tower leg of the placket down to the sleeve hem. And this is just gonna be how it naturally wants to fall when you button the sleeve cuff later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack that in place before I attach it to the sleeve cuff. And it's basically just the side that's on top. Now I'll attach that sleeve cuff right sides together with the raw end of the sleeve. And I'm letting the sleeve cuff extend about 5 8 inch past the placket legs on either side. Now the sleeve hem length is a little bit shorter than the cuff length, and that is because we're gonna put a pleat in the sleeve hem. So I'm making sure to pin this flat all the way up to that hem on the shorter side. And then when I get closer to the other side, I'm just gonna put that pleat in there with the top fold facing toward the placket on the exterior side, which you can see there. And there are notches on the pattern piece that show you where to do this. I always eyeball it. And I'll sew that cuff to the end of the sleeve with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. Then I'll just trim that seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch to remove bulk. Next, I'll press that cuff away from the sleeve, making sure that the seam allowance is pressed toward the cuff. Then I'll fold the cuff back on itself in the wrong direction so that it's right sides together and align those folds. But I wanna let that fold from the unstitched side of the cuff extend just barely past the one that is stitched down. And I'm gonna sew each end with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And I want that seam to come right beside the leg of the placket there. And I'm making sure not to actually sew the placket. I just wanna go right beside it. Then I will trim that seam allowance down to about a quarter inch and kind of clip the corner just to remove the bulk there. And I'll just flip the cuff right side out, poking out the corners. And I'm gonna align that folded edge with the seam where I attach the cuff to the sleeve. And I'm just pinning that in place. And actually, I wanna pin this in place from the exterior because when I finish this cuff, I'm gonna sew it from the exterior. So I'm going around and making sure that I line up those folded edges very nicely and neatly, pin it in place so that when I sew this on the exterior, I'll be sure to catch that interior fold and finish the sleeve cuff. I'm gonna sew this all the way around. So I'm starting at one end uh, where it attaches to the sleeve there and I'm just going very, very slowly and attaching the entire cuff to the sleeve to finish it with top stitching. And I'm gonna pivot and go around the entire perimeter of the cuff as well with that top stitching. And I'll do this for both cuffs. 
And the cuffs are now finished and they just look so nice and neat. And there's that pleat. And we're finally to the finishing touches. We just have to hem this thing and put some buttons on. So to hem it, I did first a quarter inch fold around the entire curved hem of the blouse. And I'm stitching that down first before I do a second fold, again, at a quarter inch. And then I'll hem that down as well. And the reason I'm doing this in two stages is because sometimes it's really tough to get around those curves. And I find that doing this double stitched hem fold is just a lot easier and it comes out a lot cleaner. So now we have a quarter inch tiny hem in the bottom of the shirt. Now we just have to add buttons and buttonholes. And I'm gonna try to cover this little spot that I have on my placket here. I'm gonna use that as the placement for my first button. So I'm just lining that up and I'm gonna sew my buttonholes on the right side of the blouse when worn. So I placed a pin there that lines up with where that hole was and I'll put a pin every three inches or so to locate where I wanna put those buttonholes. I'm using my buttonhole foot here and I'm first gonna sew a buttonhole in the collar stand here. And then I'll just go through and stitch a vertical buttonhole where each of those pins is. And I'm just using the pin as the center point of the buttonhole and removing the pins as I go. Every machine is just a little bit different with how it sews buttonholes. If you're not sure how to do it on your machine, I've said this before, but definitely check your owner's manual. Those are actually really helpful and they're great for learning how to do a buttonhole function. So now that I've gotten all my buttonholes sewn, I am aligning those plackets and taping the buttons to the placket. Tape is a really great way to position these so they don't slip under your presser foot while you're sewing on the buttons. And I'm just using a zigzag stitch with a really wide stitch and it's a very short stitch. It's a zero stitch, so it just goes back and forth and sews those buttonholes in place. And once I finish, I can just take the tape off and it comes off really easily. I'm also putting buttons and buttonholes in the sleeve cuffs. The only thing left to do is to attach the pockets, which I'm sorry I forgot to film. So we're done, except the pockets. Thank you so much for watching this sew along. I hope you found it helpful. And I hope that now you're inspired to go out and make yourself a button up shirt. It is definitely one of those things that feels like a big accomplishment when you make one. And I have to say, I wear this shirt all the time. I have several of these party button up shirts, which I'm sure is no surprise, but I wear this white linen version constantly. And I love it because it's just such a versatile piece. I can wear it so many different ways. I also really love wearing it with leggings. like. I can work from home, I can be comfortable, but feel like I tried a little bit and not feel like I'm just wearing pajamas all day. So that's great. I put a link in the description below to the Birdie button up pattern on the Pattern Scout website. And you'll also find a full sew along over there along with detailed photos and instructions for sewing this pattern. And I also put a lot of blog posts with pattern hacks and different ways that you can modify this pattern into different styles. If you enjoyed this sew along, be sure to hit subscribe, especially if you made it this far in the video, just hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up and also let me know what you would like to see next. Alrighty, I'm out folks. I will see you in the next video. Bye. tried and true technique for show, sewing a shirt collar. And I'll also be so, and I'm also gonna be sewing, God, I get so tongue tied. Tried and true favorite methods for sewing a shirt collar. That is very much a tongue twister.